Artem Lobov is regarded by many as the GOAT, but not because he's the greatest of all time. The Russian man who grew up in Ireland gained notoriety in MMA due to his run on the 22nd season of The Ultimate Fighter, where his coach was a longtime training partner and friend, Conor McGregor. Although his name has become popular in the sport, he currently has a losing record. So how good was Artem Lobov actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Artem the Russian Hammer Lobov. Many of you wanted me to make this video, and I assume it's the same reason why the CM Punk video was highly requested. Yes, Artem's career has become somewhat of a joke in the MMA world, and that's mostly due to his persona and losing record. But believe it or not, he played a significant role in what has become one of the biggest rivalries in MMA. And after taking a closer look at his record, he isn't as bad as people make him out to be. So in this video, we're going to take a look at his career to really understand how good he was. But before we get to it, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the intro members get early access to my videos and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. Now let's get to it. Artem began his MMA career on November 27th, 2010. He trained in Dublin, Ireland under coach John Cavanaugh, who runs Straight Blast Gym Ireland, better known as SBG Ireland. Of course, this gym is well known today because of MMA superstar Conor McGregor. But at this point in 2010, they were still a small time gym. After going 2 and 1, Artem fought Steve O'Keefe. He lost the fight in the third after getting dropped by a right hand, which led to a rear naked choke that put him to sleep. Artem's next fight was against Mike Wilkinson. It was a back and forth battle that saw Artem as the aggressor on the feet and Mike as the aggressor on the ground. There were many reversals and submission attempts from both men, and the most significant attack was a right hand from Artem that dropped Mike. Otherwise, the fight was very close, but the momentum changed once Mike secured another takedown and began to throw big elbows and punches. Although Artem got back up, he was held up against the cage and wincing in pain. This led to another takedown where Mike threw punches that forced the ref to step in. In my opinion, it was a premature stoppage. Following this defeat, Artem fought Saul Rogers. Although Saul came out strong with takedowns and submission attempts, Artem survived and brought the fight back up where he found success. He also took Saul down a few times and attempted submissions as well, but both men were able to reverse the other throughout the fight. It was very close, but the momentum began to sway Artem's way as he was a fresher fighter. Regardless, it wasn't enough as after 15 minutes, Saul won by split decision. After picking up a win and a loss, Artem fought Shea Walsh. He opened up the fight with his hands down and connected with some nice leg kicks. But shortly after, Shea secured a takedown and threw some shots from above. While off his back, Artem tried to lock up a heel hook, but Shea escaped and continued to throw ground and pound. In round 2, both men clinched up, and it was Artem who was able to bring the fight down. But aside from staying on top, not much happened. The two got back up once again, and this time Shea secured the takedown. He attempted an arm triangle choke and threw more punches before the end of the round. But early in the third, Artem connected with a huge right hand. Shea went down and ate more punches before referee Mark Goddard stepped in, making it Artem's first win by strikes. He lost his next fight before going up against Artur Sawinski. Most of the action took place on the feet, and it was Artem who was finding more success as he knocked Artur down twice in this bout. Although Artur secured a couple of takedowns, Artem got back up and even closed the fight with a takedown of his own. After three rounds, he won by majority decision, but the decision was later changed to no contest, and the reason was due to one of the judges being a close training partner to Artem. Regardless, he went 3-1 and one in his next four fights before he faced Martin Svensson. The two spent most of the fight on the feet and in the clinch. Martin secured a takedown in round one, but Artem did the same in round two, and despite Martin's reach advantage, Artem was able to close the distance. And in round two, Martin rushed in and got clipped by a right hand that knocked him down. Artem finished him with more punches on the ground. Two months later, he fought Alex Enland. Artem immediately got taken down. Eventually, Alex got a hold of his back and locked in the rear naked choke. Artem didn't tap and ended up going to sleep. Following this defeat, he entered the all or nothing lightweight tournament. His first fight of the night was against Ali McLean. Like every Artem fight, he started off strong on the feet. Although Ali's face got busted up quick, he secured the takedown before the end of the round. Round two was more of the same, but this time Ali secured the takedown earlier, which gave him time to throw ground and pound and attempt a guillotine. By the final round, Artem was exhausted, which gave Ali the opportunity to make the fight competitive on the feet and secure a takedown. It was a very close fight, but in the end, Artem won by split decision. He advanced to the finals that same evening to fight Andre Winner. Although Artem pressed forward for most of the fight, Andre attacked from a distance with his kicks. The most significant attack of the fight was a barrage of punches from Artem, but he wasn't able to do much of those as he drained most of his energy from the previous fight. Artem also denied all of the takedown attempts, but in the end, Andre won by unanimous decision. A month later, Artem fought for the Clan Wars lightweight championship against Michael Doyle. Most of the action took place on the feet, and although Artem was pressing forward more, it was Michael who landed the more significant shots. Artem did deny most of his takedown attempts, but it wasn't enough as Michael won by unanimous decision. For Artem's next fight, he moved down to featherweight. His opponent was Andrew Fisher. Although Artem looked close to being finished in the first, he rallied back in the second with a heel hook attempt. This led to a solid third round from Artem who took Andrew down and finished him off with ground and pound. After this victory, he fought Pavel Kielik. The two traded shots for three rounds and for the most part, it was Artem who was pressing forward. But even though 
though Pavel was moving back, he countered with the more significant shots. Every round was very close and in the end, the bout was ruled as a majority draw. Two months later, Artem fought Rasul Shavalov. The two traded on the feet early and although Rasul threw some nice combos, Artem was able to avoid most of them and connect with the more significant shots. Rasul tried to bring the fight down but these attempts were denied, until he finally secured one early in the second round. But right away, Artem locked in the armbar that forced Rasul to tap. This was actually a very impressive win, which led to an opportunity to get into the Ultimate Fighter house for its 22nd season. A season which was coached by Uriah Faber and Artem's teammate, Conor McGregor. And at this point, Conor was a superstar as he had just captured the UFC Interim Featherweight Championship. Artem's first fight was against Mehdi Baghdad. Although Artem was able to close the distance and connect, it was Mehdi who landed the better shots by using his reach to attack from a distance. And he secured the takedown before the end of the fight. Regardless, both men were throwing with bad intentions. And I wish there was a third round because it was a very fun fight. Plus, this was the birth of the flowy Artem meme as Conor continued to shout out from the sidelines to be more flowy. But after 10 minutes, Mehdi won the fight by majority decision, which meant Artem would not be entering the Ultimate Fighter house. But then the coaches were given the opportunity to bring back one fighter who lost in the preliminary round. So of course, Conor brought back his Russian friend and teammate. In the first round, Artem fought James Jenkins, and he looked good on the feet before landing a big right hand that dropped James. Artem threw more punches on the ground before the ref stepped in. He advanced to the quarterfinals to fight Chris Gritzmacher. Artem was the aggressor on the feet for the entire fight. This led to two big left hands in the second that knocked Chris out. In the semifinals, Artem fought Julian Arosa. It took him a minute to connect with a huge left hand before finishing Julian off with more punches on the ground. And just like that, Artem went from being eliminated in the opening round to fighting in the finals. His opponent at the Ultimate Fighter finale was supposed to be Saul Rogers, which would have been their second time meeting. But due to visa issues, Saul was removed from the fight and replaced with Ryan Hall. Despite having a lot of hype behind him, Artem was unable to impose his striking in this fight. And that was due to Ryan's high level grappling. I do have to credit Artem for defending the submission attempts. But in the end, it was Ryan who won by unanimous decision. Two months later, Artem fought Alex White. Although Artem had some moments on the feet, Alex did as well and also secured many takedowns. And after three rounds, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 202, Artem fought Chris Avila. For three rounds, Artem controlled the action on the feet by connecting with a bunch of leg kicks and landing a few Stockton slaps, which he renamed as the Shamrock. After 15 minutes, Artem won by unanimous decision. Three months later, he fought Taruto Ishihara. Both men traded on the feet for most of the fight, but Artem came forward with more volume. The most significant attack was the left hand that dropped Artem in the third. This led to Ishihara spending some time on top throwing ground and pound. But Artem got back up and continued to throw the volume before closing the fight with a takedown and ground and pound. After three rounds, he won by unanimous decision. This two-fight win streak led to Artem's first UFC main event. His opponent was Cub Swanson, who was number four in the UFC featherweight rankings at the time of his bout. Despite being the heavy underdog, Artem looked good early in the first by connecting on the feet and securing a takedown. Two of the judges scored the first round for him. But after that, it was all Cub who was much faster and mixing it up better with his combos. Regardless, Artem showed a lot of heart by eating some hard shots and not going down. In fact, the fight went all five rounds, which was the first in his career. But after 25 minutes, Cub won by unanimous decision. Six months later, Artem fought Andre Feely. Although Artem was moving forward for most of the fight, Andre connected more and this included the head kick that dropped him. And despite being taken down multiple times throughout this fight, Artem tried to lock in a heel hook while off his back. But after three rounds, Andre won by unanimous decision. After this defeat, Artem made comments about UFC lightweight Khabib Nurmagomedov. He basically said that Khabib was a chicken because he always pulled out of fights, which is something that he claims Conor McGregor never does. Khabib did not like this at all. And prior to his bout at UFC 223 in New York, he confronted Artem who was also scheduled to fight on this card. This altercation led to Khabib slapping him in the face. And once Conor found out about this, all hell broke loose. Khabib was on a bus with other UFC fighters ready to leave the Barclays Center after doing promotional appearances. And that's when Conor, Artem and some other members of Team SBG attacked the bus to try to get Khabib out. This led to the infamous dolly throw which shattered a window and injured a couple of fighters. The team fled the scene and afterwards, Artem was removed from the card. He came back a year later to fight Michael Johnson. Johnson took the fight on short notice and missed weight, which meant he had to forfeit 20% of his pay. But Artem decided to return the money to Johnson instead of taking it. For most of the fight, the two went toe to toe. And although Artem connected with some nice shots, Johnson's were more significant. He also took Artem down before the end of the fight. And after 15 minutes, Johnson won by unanimous decision. Regardless of this three fight losing streak, the UFC was willing to give Artem another fight, but he declined and requested his release from the promotion, which they accepted. He went on to sign a three fight deal with Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. And things really began to look good for Artem who defeated UFC veteran Jason Knight in a very brutal fight. This win led to a matchup with former boxer Pauli Malignaggi, which was filled with a ton of bad blood in the build up. I honestly thought Pauli's boxing would help make this an easy fight for him, but Artem made it competitive and in the end, he won by unanimous decision. He went on to fight Jason Knight for a second time, but this time Artem lost in the 
the fifth round by TKO. He hasn't fought in either bare knuckle fighting or MMA since. But on September 12, 2020, Artem signed with MMA promotion, Arena Fight Championship. At the time of making this video, he is 34 years old and I can definitely see that he has a few more fights in him. So after going 13-15-1 with one no contest, how good was Artem Lobov actually? So obviously this video was highly requested, mostly because he is the biggest meme in MMA. We've had many moments like Chael Sonnen's I Can't Let You Get Close, Tony Ferguson is the type of guy, George St. Pierre is not impressed, where does Kevin Lee fit into this, and so much more. But there was never a fighter who carried that meme energy as much as Artem, and I think he should be okay with that because it gave him so much attention, which is something that many fighters wish they had. But for him to do it with an even record for most of his career is even more impressive, because fighters with a record like his never get any shine. Of course, Conor McGregor was a huge part of his popularity, but Artem used that to carve his own path and now there's a bunch of people calling him the GOAT. And whether they mean it or not, his name is still around even if he's no longer in the UFC. I mean for him to get a main event fight goes to show how many eyes he draws. He truly created a legacy without having to be one of the greats. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad fighter. First off, his run in the Ultimate Fighter was legit and was absolutely awesome to witness. He displayed the best striking of his career in that house. His uppercuts carried a lot of power, and so did his leg kicks. He would also constantly switch his fight stance which made him unpredictable on the feet. But his defense and head movement never really improved. And it's a shame that he had such a short reach because if it was longer, his striking would have been next level. He also had some decent takedown and submission defense. I was surprised to see how much he utilized submissions to reverse the position. And if he developed his ground and pound game more, I could have seen him find so much more success. But honestly, I think his record doesn't match the narrative of someone who can't fight. Out of his 15 losses, one was by TKO. And that defeat was in my opinion an early stoppage. But before it was stopped, the fight was very competitive. I could say the same with his 12 defeats by decision. Some of those fights could have went his way. But even in the ones where he was outclassed, he had his moments and overall he showed so much heart. And the two losses in his career by way of submission were also admirable as he went to sleep instead of tapping out. What I'm trying to get at is that Artem didn't just lose, but he lost with pride. He gave it his all without ever giving up. And to me, that's what makes him a true fighter. Let's also not forget he is the reason for one of the most heated rivalries in MMA history. The bus attack prior to UFC 223, the post-fight melee at UFC 229, and the record set for the biggest MMA pay-per-view event in the United States. None of this would have happened without Artem. That's why I would give his MMA career a 6 out of 10. I do wish him the best in his MMA career moving forward and will definitely be rooting for him in his next fight. Because even though he isn't the greatest fighter, he is the one and only Artem Lobov. My name is Keon and this is my take on Artem the Russian Hammer Lobov. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in my next one.